Hello everyone, it's Misha and I'm excited that you're here. If you're watching on my personal page, just a reminder that we'll be cutting that off. You really need to go into the, um, the Facebook group, which is for women, joyful and resilient women to see the entire interview, or you can participate in um, being a subscriber to my YouTube channel and see, get notified when this interview goes on to YouTube. But today I'm delighted to be introducing you to Veronica, Vit Veronica Vitale. And hello, Veronica. Hi, Misha. <laughs> Veronica's in Italy right now, and it's literally, it's like nine o'clock at night. So I feel very honored that you've taken the time to be here with me. And I'm going to introduce to you all to Veronica, a little bit about her. Um, so I'm going to, I was going to show you the slides, but I think I'm going to read some of it because I'm going to pick and choose. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but Veronica, why don't you tell us kind of, um, well, do you want to tell the story of how we met or do you want me to tell the story of how we met? It's fine if you want to say it. I'm just going to follow up with you. But thank okay. you so much for having me. It's a big honor. And what you do for the community out there is amazing. And also the fact that you try to raise awareness about the whole universe that comes to us as women, it's very, very important. Not everybody does it. Thank you. Thank you. See, everybody? She's already so sweet. And <laughs> She's a really nice human. So Veronica and I met. I'm actually going to show you guys this shirt that I'm wearing. More love in the world because she wrote this most incredible, powerful, soul-spirited calling song called Hymn to Humanity. And Veronica, would you tell people the purpose of that song, how that came to you? Well, at first, you know, when uh, we all entered in the pandemic season, let's call it this way, um, between March and May, I was um, in, in America, and uh, the whole plan was like to land in America around January. I was taking care of my music release, of my, my new album, Inside of the Outsider. And what happened is that then the pandemic happened and everything has changed. Like me and my husband were in Atlanta, Georgia, and we have seen the whole world changing, the whole way of living life, supermarket, grocery store, where completely empty. I never seen anything like that in my entire life, ever. Like. Atlanta is very, it's a lot of traffic, you know, crowded. And uh, basically our neighborhood was completely empty. Like everybody's staying in the house. There were a lot of restriction. And if you were driving like too long or too far away from your area, like the police and cops car were, were following you, behind you, because you weren't supposed to cross a certain type of limit. I really, it was like a sci-fi movie, really. <laughs> And um, on the way back from a, from a grocery store one day, uh, I have seen the most beautiful sunset I have ever seen in my life. There was this sun, red, huge, and I felt like it was the last day of humankind on Earth. And once we went back to our studio, I told Patrick, my husband, please leave me alone. I need to compose because there is this music that is just inside my head, inside my heart, I want to get it out. And uh, I enter in the studio around seven, I get out around like four or four hours later. And I had this prayer, it was a prayer. I realized it was a prayer like the day after when I finally recorded it. And I usually sing in Italian and English, but this prayer contained some sort of Hebrew lyrics. And I didn't know. For the first time it was a very instinctive, um, way of composing i was like I, I was not limiting my creativity and i just put down there everything every single word i was like even if it doesn't make sense to me i'm just gonna write it and a friend of mine she actually speaks hebrew and she was like this part match exactly with all verses every lyric um, of the song you composed and uh, it was about genesis and how the world started about the light let it be light mm -hmm. And um, it was amazing how everything came together. And uh, the way we met is very, very simple. And I mean, I released this track and I reached something like half a million view. 
and uh, I had this wonderful dream. I was standing in front of a theater and I had a suitcase and there were some t-shirts in it with all flags of the world. And my father was with me in this dream. And I was like, hey, dad, I'm sorry, I don't have nothing but this shirt. I look at the shirt, there was a heart in the between, in the very middle. And I was like, when I woke up, I go to my husband and I say, you know what? Huh? I was like, we are going to make a world choir out of it. And, and you did. I created <laughs> really this call for artists. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I didn't expect it, though. I mean, Artists United, which is the foundation that, you know, was created after it and as a consequence of it, was the most beautiful thing that ever happened into my life. I feel so blessed and grateful. Yeah, and that's how I met you. Yeah. You had I the courage to respond. Yep, I did have the courage to respond. I was terrified, but I did. I responded to the <laughs> call to artists saying, would you like to sing in this song and send us a little clip? And I had to send you questions like I'm not as tech savvy as I thought I was. And can I do it this way and that way? And you were so sweet and kind. And, and then you put this thing together. And I had no idea when you put, when you all put this video together, the way that you superimpose like our pictures and paintings and mirrors and screens, it was so creative. It was so powerful. And, um, <laughs> you and Patrick and, you know, your team of people that pulled this all together with your vision to, to bring joy. I mean, this was so, so impactful for me because I had just at that point started my podcast and it was yes. about the pains of the pandemic, the pains in our world, the pains of racism and the joys. And the fact that we, what I was learning was even though there were all these pains going on that we couldn't negate and dismiss the joy because then that made the pain even harder. And yet we couldn't yes. negate the pain because that then we wouldn't really know what joy was, you know? And so I created this podcast and then I meet you who's longing for her family in Italy, where the, the, the first country that was struck with such intense devastation from the pandemic and yes. missing your family. And you pull together this beautiful song, not only to share with the world, but to share with artists. I, it was so yes. moving. I'm still moved by it, obviously. You can tell. <laughs> I can tell. I can tell. And the most beautiful thing is that, you know, the majority of the artists, and I work with every sort uh, of artists, A-list artists, B-list artists, but uh, newcomers artists. But the thing is this, what I really wanted to do was to have authenticity, real people coming into the prayer and sing. What I figure out eventually is that, you know, I invited some stars to sing on it. And they say, yes, I'm not going to tell you who they are. But in the end, those people that were corrupted in their heart, that made some choices that were actually wrong in their life, they weren't capable of singing that song, even reading that song. The, um, the people that actually was part of this project is all people that were so good inside, the people with nothing people with disabilities people that had a, a bigger purpose like yours for example to bring people together and build a bridge between generations and communities and you know and also balance what life is between joy and sorrow because one doesn't exist without the other okay. and uh yeah it was it was a beautiful because one thing is to have famous people just joining together in a studio and then Guys, I mean, you guys sent me video with your phone and you sound like the most professional studio ever. Like it felt like we all recorded together and that was the whole purpose of this was, choir. Yeah. And it was amazing. Like I feel a connection with you and with so many other girls that I, I didn't expect to ever experience ever in my life. It has been yeah, a year and a half that we know each other. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> it's a beautiful collection of people. I mean, with the the, the chief and with um, people from countries all over the world. And, and then we were on this thread where we could communicate with each other and share love for the challenges people were facing. And it was it was really a, a pivotal moment for me as well. And I, I just I thank you publicly for, for spearheading that project, because I really think that it changed a lot of lives. Um, and it was, I mean, there were, there are people who I'm still connecting with, you know, on Facebook and through Messenger 
that um, are really good That's hearts, great. really good souls. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you know, I just love a few to, days yeah, ago. Mm -hmm. Yes, just a few days ago, I received this message from Glody. He was one of the uh, a cappella trio from Congo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it was yeah, so good. Got, <laughs> yes. And he texted me and he said, after the prayer and the harm to humanity, we had a certain type of exposure. And now, you know, before we were living in total poverty. And now, because of that, it doesn't pass. I mean, every single weekend, they go um, sing for birthdays, uh, weddings. And he said, I can, the way I look right now, what I can buy for my clothes right now. And I felt great because I really didn't, um, you know, Misha, the one thing about this prayer is that just like for Artists United, we never asked money to anyone and we did everything without a single dollar. Like everything was free and for free. And it's, uh, incredible when when you see the results of what this movement has created and then you see all these multi-billionaire and you start wondering what you could do and what is the reason why you don't you know absolutely yeah so i just want to uh, remind people who are on my facebook group uh, my, my facebook page that i will actually be um, ending the live stream in the on my personal page if you identify as a woman, you can go on to my Facebook group, Joyful and Resilient Women. Uh, there should be a link in the description of our, our talk there for you. Otherwise, you can certainly subscribe to my YouTube channel. And as soon as the video is up, you'll be notified. But we will be turning off the, the homepage interview and you'll need to go into the group to watch the rest. I do want to share a little bit more about you, Veronica. I want to let people know okay. that... If you all couldn't tell, Veronica is a visionary artist who stands for performance art. Her work explores the relationship between the performer and the audience, the limits of the body and the possibilities of the mind. Her art is ultra dynamic in the age of techno glitch aesthetics. And um, there is so much more about her. So I really, I really want to make sure that you guys also get to go to her website. Is the video there? The one that we did him to humanity is that on your website absolutely but they can they can also find it on youtube on youtube okay so just everywhere just type my name it. yeah and that's true Misha. Veronica's everywhere now <laughs> <laughs> yeah i had very bright purple hair at the time so it's hard to miss oh my me. god they were amazing <laughs> they were amazing i remember i was about to tell you the very first thing that i got was like wow what a beautiful purple hair purple <laughs> Like I never seen, <laughs> and then there was another girl with green hair. I was like, oh, guys, I feel That's at home. Right. I mean, now we're talking. <laughs> right, That's very true. That's very yes, true. yes. Was green hair. There was, oh my goodness, it was yeah, it was um, yes, <sighs> absolutely amazing. Yeah, a lot of beautiful people from all over the world. So, yes. in the sense of your um. As a, as a, as an artist during the pandemic, what kind of pains can you shed light on? And you only have to share what you feel comfortable sharing. You never have to share anything other than that. But what are, what are some pains that this pandemic brought up for you? Well, I will share everything with you because I think that these type of conversations are based on honesty and truth, and that's what you deserve. So whatever it is, I'm just going to answer to you with open heart. Um, during pandemic, I think that many people we loved revealed themselves. Many people started wearing a mask, but their true colors really came out. And uh, Patrick and I experienced a huge loneliness because we felt completely misunderstood by the people we had in our circle of trusted people. So we isolated ourselves and um, my family was overseas and I wasn't even sure I was going to see my dad again. Because, you know, when COVID started, uh, nobody really knew what COVID was, what's going to happen. Uh, you know, you just see the supermarket getting empty, medicines impossible to be found. And uh, also the separation from the people that we... Um, 
you know, when you say overseas, you mean you are in a land and the love, pe the people you love the most are in another land and there is a lot of oceans and water between the two of you. There is not such a thing as a street or road. You can just drive for hours and, and just go, you know. It was really impossible to reach out. Also, when pandemic has started, uh, it was just three months away from my surgery. I had a myoma, which is uh, a good fibroid that was removed so I can have a baby <laughs> one day. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was very hard because uh, I had a C-section type of surgery. And when you face that without having a baby, you see your body changing and you see a scar, which looks like a smile, that if you have a baby, it it's like, <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you know, if you have a baby, you look at that scar and you say, okay, that's the smile of a life that just started. But when there is no baby, you look at the scar and you feel like there is a part of you missing. Mm -hmm. And um, it doesn't matter, you know, it took a year for my entire body to heal. And um, that was, I think, the most, uh, the hardest moment and the biggest pain I had to face. Yeah. Yes. A the unknown. And the unknown, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so how did you face each of those pains? How, what, what were you able to do for yourself to move through it? Because I don't, I don't remember seeing you in, in watching you this last year and a half. I don't remember seeing you toss it out or say, I'm not going to look at that. I saw you feeling your pains. And so, yeah, yeah I'm just curious how, how you move through that. Well, I am not one of those people that really, you know, if I am angry or if I am upset, I never share it with the public and audience because when you are a public figure, when you are an, an artist that is known, um, you don't want to really just give yourself like that all the time because you have to defend yourself from the judgment of people that sometimes, you know, social hate sometimes just happen. People leave comments without even knowing you. They judge you based on nothing. And we have to remember one thing, that our voice matter, that our life matter. So the way I faced every single pain uh, that I encountered was using my creativity. I see my creativity as a gift of God. Now, I don't believe in a God as a portrait in classic religion. I believe in a cosmic universal God which embrace the best of all religion and embra embrace the color of human beings and embrace people that just love each other. Because I believe that in the end of this life, we will be all judged based on the love we were able to give. Not to who, but how. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wise words from a young Italian woman. Thank you, Italian, my California American girl. Woman. <laughs> Italian and American woman. Yep, yep. <laughs> now I'm American too. <laughs> I know, I know. You have a delightful husband who is uh, very supportive of your music and you as a human as well. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Very and much. so what would you say have been, because even though there have been pains these last 18 months in the pandemic, what would you say have been your biggest joys? My biggest choice, well, first of all, as I said, Artists United, like there was not a single minute that passed by without receiving a message from you guys. Hey, how are you doing? Especially because many girls were like, I sent you my video, now I wanna see the results. So they were like, I wanna see, I wanna see. <laughs> And because each one of you was placed in a different uh, town and city in the world. So <laughs> we got messages in the morning, uh, 12 midnight or in the middle of the night the every morning. time <laughs> <laughs> earlier in the morning <laughs> when yeah. we posted and released this prayer uh we we couldn't believe it i mean i remember clearly me and patrick being in bed it was it was 10 in the morning we were like today we are sleeping you guys were enjoying that and commenting and sharing and it was amazing the reaction was huge i mean <laughs> and uh yeah i mean 
the reaction was so big that we got so many news and TV and radio interested into it. Radio from Nigeria to Cincinnati, Ohio. I mean, yeah. we're talking about global reaction and Patrick and I were sleeping. Like the very first day of release, we were like, oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it yes. was beautiful. That's we felt beautiful. the responsibility for that. Like we wanted to deliver a, a proper message, but also a job of a high quality because you guys were there. And I remember I was translating Persian because, you know, you know, Mish, another joy I had was to see together countries such as Afghanistan, Iraq, mm -hmm. Pakistan, and Iran together, singing for the same belief, light and hope. Mm -hmm. And if you see what happened lately, that video is a treasure right now. Yeah. So another joy, well, I discovered a lot more about American food, donuts, <laughs> for example, they are great things. <laughs> <laughs> well, you finally got to go to Italy and hug your parents, right? After a year, yeah. one year, yes, yes, yes. And I remember when, when I made it to the airport, my father hugged me, my mother hugged me, and uh, I told her we made it. Because three days later, I mean, I remember our flight happened on the 15th December. The 17th December, all airport shut down again. So it was just on the edge. It happened. Yeah. That was we my Christmas. Trip. We were all excited for you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you had hundreds of us watching. They made it. They made it. They're hugging. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, how beautiful. So I'm just going to share for a quick moment, everyone. This is the hymn to humanity. And again, Veronica wrote this. She created this and then invited people to come in and play and listen and, and sing parts of it or create parts of it. And so I'm just going to share real quickly. I think I can share my screen. We'll see what happens. Okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to give it a shot. Um, let's see. Here it is. I'm, I'm, a, I'm hoping it'll it'll work, but we'll see. Can everybody see it? Uh, let's see. Yes, I can. That's awesome. All right. I'm gonna just go to the middle part of the. Okay. All countries can still change the course of this pandemic. Are they wonder waiting way we for the living? Not planet by the planet, no I didn't see. To say you don't be a super Then we shall say Hallelujah. There she goes. There you are. We all say Hallelujah. We just giving people a sample wow. because they can go onto YouTube and watch it themselves. But it's just, um, even just listening to it again for that tiny moment, I got goosebumps. It's beautiful, Veronica. What we have done together, it's unbelievable when I think about it. And uh, again, I really believe that Artists United was the best thing I've ever done in life. And, uh, you know, for the past six months, we had to adjust again with our finances and with our partnership and get back on track for production, especially because now we're back in Italy and finally we can travel again and go back to normality a little bit, thanks to many other situations. But um, one of my goals is to still... Uh, you know, push Artists United, promote Artists United, and possibly, you know, extend Artists United in other countries with real means, you know, also with finances, as soon as we can, as soon as we can. Mm. Yes, it's much wonderful. more is coming. Everything you do is wonderful. So I'm sure that there'll be good things coming to you. And um, 
just want to remind everybody to go to Veronica's website. She is an inspiration, a lot of uh, beautiful work coming out of this incredible Italian American woman who's got such a big heart. <laughs> I, I and, thank you for saying that I am an inspiration, but most of the time I feel nothing but a glitch in the system. Mm. So, but thank you. Mm, interesting. I would love to know more about that. We actually still have five minutes. You thought we were ending, but no. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean by a glitch in the system? Interesting. Well, um, most of the time, people that are honest, that are transparent, people that work with others for good, they're not considered like, you know, if you are a famous artist or a known artist, what they expect you to do is like, not talk to anyone, don't communicate to anyone, be separated, be divided. Well, most of the time, you know, especially when I look at my story and history in the Italian music market and how it started, because my story is all based on an outsider point of view. You know, I, I started in Germany, my career. I hit the chart of Amazon back in 2011 in Germany, not in Italy. Mm -hmm. So before my country noticed me and learned more about my story, I always felt like a ghost. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, also when I was a child, I was victim of bullying. So at school. So when you are a creative person, when you are different, you know, you feel like a glitch, something that is not even supposed to stay here. If you talk to people that is jealous, for example, and they communicate with another person that has a talent, they really believe that you shouldn't even exist because by you existing and casting a light, what happens is that they feel their shadows even deeper mm -hmm. and they feel defeated rather than standing up and unite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting and, and very sad and frustrating is that there, you're not alone in that feeling. I mean, I felt that for a very long time. I was bullied in school. I was teased constantly. Um, and, and you know, there, there was this journey for me that started about 12 years ago to find my belonging. And a lot of that I, I had to create for myself. And I see you doing that. And I guess that's really where I come in as you're an inspiration. Because despite feeling like a glitch in the system, you're still doing it. You're still showing up and you're inviting others to show yes. up with you in a very loving, authentic way. You know, in my country, we say hope is the last thing to die. Mm -hmm. So hope That's never dies. And if I can be something, you know, for all colors of the rainbow to exist, light has to fall in pieces. I don't want to get into technicalities or science. But if I have to be in pieces at that point, I want to be the rainbow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That we all can be. Beautiful way to end. <laughs> I think you are the rainbow. I think many of us are the rainbow. And we find each other because the, the lights complement each other. Right? And the lights that don't complement each other, we don't have to have. Although they do teach us more about being who we are and who we want to be. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So thank yes. you for being my guest today. Thank you for, thank you for having me. Starting us all off 18 months ago. <laughs> thank your parents for birthing you. <laughs> oh, I will tell them they will be happy. And thank, and thank Patrick for you know meeting you so you could also be in the United States from time to time. And we've got a lot of things to put exactly. Out there. Really, really appreciate thanks to the United States you... for giving me my husband because you know, after seven years in the United States, I finally met him. I, oh, I, wow, that's a long yeah. time to wait. <laughs> Alone, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, we're, we're all very fortunate. And I and I want to also thank you for always supporting me. When, you know, last year when we first met, you were just constantly pouring love into my Facebook group and into my podcast and into my voice. And I, I appreciate how of course, Misha. available you are, Veronica. To of so course, many. Misha. You deserve it. And remember, it's not, you know, in our industry, especially the music industry, they say 
what matters is the numbers of followers and streams, but in reality, true fact, even if you can change the life of one person, you already won. That's real success. Because we don't do this for fame. We do it to, for a higher purposes, greater purposes. So I admire you just as much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll say goodbye to everybody. Thank you, everybody, so much for joining Ciao. us. And don't go anywhere, Veronica. <laughs> I'm just going to end the broadcast right here for just a moment. And All yeah, right. great to have you. Thank you. Ciao, ciao.